Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Dr. Harris channel. It's been a while. It's good to be back. And we are going to pick up where we left off. Remember when we first started, when I first started the channel, the first thing that was on the table was to talk to you about the PI3 kinase signaling pathway. And that was the big excitement. Yay! I needed to get that out to you. I did that, right? So we went through the terms. I gave you the pathway, the pathway for this beautiful and well, <laughs> well engaging and exchanging pathway. I did that. Now we're going to look at another one of the maladies that PI3 comes in contact with directly, right? We talked about diabetes already. We gave a long extensive look at that and things that can be done to help manage type two. And we talked a little bit about type one and all of that in the insulin signaling pathway and how the phosphoinositol 3 kinase actually gets to work in the cell and what it means. And if we remember, this is a brief review because it'll make the video way too long, right? So if we remember the phosphodil, I'm sorry, the phosphoinositol 3 kinase deals with cell differentiation, cell proliferation, cell survival, motility in the cell, cell growth, all the things that deal with growth and body and keeping up what we have on the inside, cell cellularly speaking. Cancer is such a thing where we understand brief. It's just an over growth of cells in a particular area, breast, lymph nodes, rectum, and on and on and on. What we're doing in this segment is just looking at cancer and the phosphoinositol 3 kinase transduction signaling, how it engages, how it speaks to the setup of cancer, generally speaking. And there is a little differentiation with melanoma, which is briefly addressed. Everything else follows this general framework. Okay, if you have any questions, if anything is not clear and clarity is key. So we give everything in short excerpts, short pieces so that continuity is there and understanding, which is key, is also there. So if you need to, I suggest that you go back, visit cell organelles because the ribosome is in there. You need to remember what it does. Right? If you forget, like, oh, I don't remember, then go back to the video, view it. Then you go to getting the terms because we kept, I made sure we kept the characters that we introduced before earlier, put them back so that it's clear and it hits so you can understand. If you have a good memory and you followed it through, you remember, okay, this is the character for the PI3. This is the character for PIP2. Remember PIP2? PIP2 is back because we're talking about the phosphoinositide 3 kinase and the players are still the same. They're just going to operate a little different. We have a couple of new ones, but nothing like huge and like, oh no, everything is safe, okay? All right, so I'm going to get you into this, in this little segment that we put together expressly to talk about cancer, expressly in terms of our PI3 kinase, because that is the root. I remember to talking to us before in the very beginning, how it is the root to many of the maladies we see and have to deal with. So I'd like you to be able to get it clearly, take your notes, and again, go back to the prior videos, organelle, getting the terms, and the one marked the pathway, because they are key in keeping, if you're just coming and you're just subscribing, welcome. And uh, please make sure you see this other video so that this one makes sense. And if, again, any questions, you know what to do. I will answer them. All right, let's get into it. The PI3K, AKTM TOR pathway, 
is an intracellular signaling pathway, which is important in growth, survival, and proliferation. P10 is phosphatase and tensin humalog. The major positive and negative regulators of the PI3 kinase pathway. These key signaling components are two of the most frequently mutated proteins in human cancers. P10, the negative regulator of PI3 kinase signaling, decreases its expression in many cancers, and it downregulated through several mechanisms, including mutation and protein instability. P10 regulates PI3 kinase signaling by dephosphorylating PIP3 to PIP2, an action which is essential to its function as a tumor suppressor. Loss of P10 by gene mutation occurs in a high percentage of common human tumors. One of the most common mutations of all, which leads to overactivation of PI3 kinase pathway is loss of P10. Amplification or mutation of PI3K and AKT in PI3K pathway have been identified in a variety of cancer types. These mutations increase kinase activity and contribute to transformation. PI3K, AKT signaling pathway is deregulated through a variety of mechanisms including overexpression or activation of growth factor receptors such as HER2 and IGFR. HER2, human epidermal growth factor receptor 2 and IGFR, insulin-like growth factor receptor. IGF ligands are compromised in the development of cancer. They mediate their effects by binding to their receptor, IGFR. Once it is activated, it can trigger the activation of PI3K, AKT pathway. Activation of IGFR can also trigger the activation of the MAP kinase signaling pathway, which causes cell proliferation and cell growth. Therefore, IGFR signaling pathway is associated with the development of various forms of cancer due to its role in cell survival, growth, and proliferation. When a growth factor binds to the HER family receptor, then the receptor is ready to dimerize with other HER receptors. Dimerization results, the phosphorylation of the intracellular portion of the receptors. Exception to this, is HER2 receptor, which is not required a ligand to activation. It is always ready to dimerize. Dimerization results, the phosphorylation of the intracellular portion of the receptors which allows the signaling molecules to bind. This can lead to activation of many signaling pathways, including the PI3K pathway. This leads to overactivation of PI3K pathway, and, as a result, it occurs cancer. Deregulation of elements of the mTOR pathway for an example, overexpression of S6K1, an inactivation of 4EBP1, has been reported in cancers, such as, breast, ovarian, renal, colon and, neck cancers. Due to S6K1 overexpression, it phosphorylates several places of the S6 ribosomal protein. Therefore, the kinase activity of this protein leads to an increase in protein synthesis and cell proliferation. For EBP1 is a translation repressor protein which mediates the regulation of protein translation by inhibiting the protein synthesis. Inactivation of 4EBP1 leads to increased protein synthesis and cell proliferation which causes uncontrolled cell growth. T4 
TSC1 and TSC2 are tumor suppressors, which mediate overactivation of mTOR pathway. They inhibit the Rab protein, which can directly activate mTOR and AKT. Inactivation on TSC1 and TSC2 leads to overactivation of mTOR pathway, which causes uncontrolled cell growth. Furthermore, the PI3K mTOR pathway is altered in melanoma. Overall, the alterations in major components of the mTOR pathway, P10 loss and AKT overexpression seem to have substantial influence in melanoma progression. Okay, so that gave us a very nice, concise introduction and briefing on how our phosphoinositide 3 kinase signaling pathway is at the beginning portions of how cancer deals with uh, all the things that it comes in with and the symptoms that we suffer and undergo and why the treatment remedies are such as they are, <clears throat> i.e. chemo and and thus, <clears throat> and removals and things in that in that area as far as treatments. It's a nice thing to know where it stems from so that those of us with inquiring minds and who are visionaries can start taking a look at some of the formative steps before the, before the fruit of the proliferation gone awry, before the extreme pain in the areas where <laughs> cell markers of, okay, this is where we stop, get overridden because of mTOR, because of MAP. These are the starting, the beginning steps before it's right up on top of us with all that that brings. <clears throat> so it's a nice way to start to let your mind work and suggest other options early on things that can help if it's not about, if it's not solely genetics and nothing ever is solely anything, especially when it comes to the human body, especially when it comes to anything science, nothing is solely anything. And if we're given to puzzle and abstracts, this, these are the types of steps that are key in helping a vast array of people come to terms and possibly even see a better a better tomorrow in places where this one thing can stretch out into many different places. All right, so use the information, ask questions, be creative, <laughs> and I'll see you at our next segment, which will be hypertension, okay? Unless we have questions on this particular topic, it'll be hypertension, all right? All right, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, and thanks again for viewing the Dr. Harris channel. Be well.